Welcome to Health Matters, a virtual conference, a global conference. We have people watching and participating from all over the world. So we'll do a shout out to our friends in Australia, Peru, Spain, the UK, Israel. We're so delighted that you've joined us. I'm Karen Jacobs. I'm your co-host now for the next test 10 sessions. I'm a clinical professor in occupational therapy and the program director of the online post-professional doctorate in occupational therapy. Our next speaker has been our morning co-host, and I'm so thrilled to introduce Terry Ellis. Dr. Terry Ellis is an assistant professor in the Department of Physical Therapy and Athletic Training. Dr. Ellis is also the director of the Center for Neurorehabilitation and the American Parkinson's Disease Association National Rehabilitation Resource Center. And both of these centers are housed at Sargent College. Her research focuses on investigating the impact of exercise and rehabilitation on the progression of disability in people with Parkinson's disease. She has a particular interest in identifying barriers to exercise and using mobile health technology to help these people live life to their fullest and to participate in exercise. I want to do a shout out to Terry because she is an exceptional educator. Ask any student who's taken a course with her. She has received the Whitney Powers Award for Excellence in Teaching. So I'm happy to welcome Terry Ellis. Thank you, Karen. So in the Center for Neurorehabilitation, we are a team of rehabilitation scientists and physical therapists with expertise in the rehab of people with Parkinson's disease. We are most interested in investigating ways to slow the progression of disability in people with Parkinson's. So how do we do that? Let me introduce you to Frank. So Frank was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at the age of 53. He was referred to us by our collaborators at Boston Medical Center, Dr. Marie St. Hilaire and Kathy Thomas. Here he is in the slide talking to Tammy DeAngelis, a physical therapist in our center. And what Frank is talking to Tammy about is his concerns about his walking. He's noticed that his walking speed has declined in the recent weeks and months and as a result, he is walking less and less over time. So we measured Frank's walking. And what we, what we learned is that Frank is walking much slower than would be expected of a man his age without Parkinson's disease. So Frank came to us and he wanted to know, is there anything he can do to preserve his function and to minimize the impact of this disease on his everyday life? So most of us, most people are generally familiar with Parkinson's disease, but let's look a little deeper. We know that Parkinson's disease, our understanding of Parkinson's disease has broadened in the recent decade, but for right now, we're gonna focus on the substantia nigra, which is located in the, min, in the midbrain. The substantia nigra produces and sends a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Dopamine helps with the control of movement. So people with Parkinson's disease experience resting tremors, slowness of movement or bradykinesia, rigidity or stiffness, for example. And although many people hear about the problems with tremor in Parkinson's disease, for most people, it's not the primary concern. In fact, from multiple research studies, we have learned that people with Parkinson's care immensely about their walking ability because after all, walking is fundamental to our ability to navigate in the community and to participate in work, social, and leisure activities. So although much progress has been made in the treatment of Parkinson's disease, there is no cure. And none of the medicines that are used to treat Parkinson's actually slow the progression of the disease. However, the medicines are reasonably effective in reducing tremor, in helping with stiffness, and improving speed of movement. However, the long-term use of the medicine leads to a sort of a shortened effect and some unpleasant side effects. In addition, the, the medicines are sort of best to treat the Parkinson's symptoms, but they're not very effective in treating walking, 
which is of critical importance in people with Parkinson's disease. So the question is, what are the other treatment possibilities? What if the solution was obvious? What if it was right in front of us? What, what if it was already accessible? What about the impact that exercise has on the brain of people with Parkinson's disease? Can exercise actually mitigate the progression of disability? Why exercise, you might ask? Well, we have evidence in animal models with Parkinson's disease about the benefits of exercise. So there are certain chemicals in the brain that are elevated with exercise. And these chemicals seem to uh, protect against the loss of dopamine-producing cells in the substantia nigra. So as, uh, the other thing that exercise does is it, it helps with uh, the sort of increasing the availability of dopamine and strengthening the motor circuits to make movement easier. So what if we ask the question, what happens to the progression of disability in Parkinson's disease if people take medications and add exercise onto that? Does the progression of disability differ compared to people with Parkinson's who take medications only without exercise? This is what we wanted to know. So we, in our lab, we examine walking behavior at the macro level in people's natural environments. So we wanted to understand what happens to the amount of walking that people do under usual conditions in their home and community environments. So along with my colleagues, Dr. Dibble, Earhart, Ford, Foreman, and Kavanaugh, we conducted a multi-center prospective longitudinal trial to, to examine the natural history of disability without exercise. So we had people with Parkinson's come into our lab and we had them wear an activity monitor for one week. And they participated in their usual activities so that we could understand how much walking they were doing. We had them come in at baseline and then we had them come back one year later and wear that activity monitor for another week so we could compare. What did we find? Well, we found a 12% reduction in the amount of steps that people with Parkinson's disease took over this one year period of time. And we found a similar pattern at two years. And if we extrapolate out, what, look what happens over five years. We have evidence of significant uh, significant progression of disability related to walking over five years. So what do we do about that? Well, in our lab, we, in the Center for Neuro Rehab, we prescribed an exercise program for one year because we wanted to be able to compare what, now that we know what happens when you don't exercise, what happens when you do exercise? So. We understand that exercise over a year in anybody, and in particular in people with Parkinson's disease, can be a real challenge. So we introduced an exercise application, or app, to help people with Parkinson's exercise over the long term. Now we know from other studies that there are two, in particular, key components of an exercise program. Aerobic conditioning, which we can do with fast or brisk walking, and a progressive strengthening program. So what did we do for Frank? For Frank, we prescribed an exercise program consisting of aerobic conditioning with brisk walking, 7,500 7, steps per day, in addition to progressive strengthening program. And this number came from what we learned about his baseline status. Where did he start out and where did we think he had the potential to go? So this exercise app, called Well Pepper, makes exercise accessible, dynamic, individualized, and sustainable. We videotape people performing their exercises in our lab. And these exercises are housed on the app, which is available on their smartphone or on a tablet. And the exercises are stored on the cloud. That means they can access their exercises from anywhere at any time. Users simply watch the video, perform the exercises, and they indicate how many they did. And they say how hard they were, how easy they were, whether the exercises were painful or painless. And we can see this data 
and so can the patient. The other thing is, is that the physical therapist can remotely change the exercise so that if the exercises need to be more challenging or the patient would like more variety, we can do that remotely and the patient doesn't have to come in. So we keep connected to patients over the course of a year to help them succeed. So here's Frank. Now he knows what to do and he knows how often to do it. We stay connected to Frank to help him succeed on his exercise journey. The other thing we give to Frank is an activity tracker to help him, to give him feedback about how much walking he's doing. So he wears this activity tracker on his belt or on his wrist. It's a sort of fancy pedometer. So he can get feedback and monitor his progress over time. This approach helps him stay motivated and realize the benefits along the way. So how did Frank do? Well, Frank did great. He increased the number of steps he walked on a daily basis over the course of this year. Look at that increase in the slope on the slide. He, over one year, in the context of a progressive degenerative disease, Frank's walking got better. He's taking control of his disease and improving his quality of life. Exercise is changing the progression of Frank's disability. The benefits are many, the side effects are few, especially compared to medications. And exercise, unlike medicine, doesn't have to be FDA approved. It's available now and our team is ready to help. If you have any questions related to exercise and Parkinson's disease, please feel free to contact us. We are fortunate to have a national exercise helpline that's funded by the American Parkinson's Disease Association. You can reach us at our toll-free number or by using our email, rehab at bu.edu. A special thanks to all my colleagues, because this work wouldn't be possible with my great team in the Center for Neuro Rehab, my collaborators at Boston University and the Boston University School of Public Health, in addition to my colleagues around the country. Thank you very much.